You know, you walk out the door, you see someone that you know, and they ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Hey guys, it's Heather here and I'm bringing you another in-depth guide, this time all about giant bombs for Clash of Clans. Like my spring trap guide, and if you haven't seen that yet, be sure to check it out after this video. I'm gonna go into some basic details about these traps, but I'm also going to go into great detail about top strategies for placement, including showing you the new meta for double giant bombs, the instant bacon makers with no bomb tower. There is a way to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's top secret being exposed. And I haven't seen anybody talk about this yet. I feel like I'm giving away this huge secret. It's going to blow you away, literally. So let's get right into it. You get one giant bomb starting at Town Hall 6, and then one additional giant bomb per Town Hall level up to Town Hall 10 for a total of five giant bombs. Town Hall 6s can level their giant bomb up one level to level two, and Town Hall 8s can make them level three, and Town Hall 10s can max them out at level four giant bombs. Level one giant bombs do 175 damage to all the units in its damage radius, and each level of giant bomb Bomb adds 25 damage. So level two is 200, level three is 225, and level four gives maximum damage of 250 to all units in range. A level one damage radius is three, three squares, whatever, however you want to calculate that, it's three. Then level two and level three giant bombs have a damage radius of 3.5, and level four has a damage radius of four. All levels have the same trigger radius of two tiles. So if any unit gets within two tiles of the giant bomb, it's going to set it off. The bomb that is under the bomb tower and the giant bomb have similar components and do similar area damage as well. The first bomb tower is available at Town Hall 8 and essentially gives that Town Hall 8 an additional visible giant bomb. Giant bombs take up a 2x2 two two space on the map. This allows them to be placed in many inconspicuous spots. They're hidden, so without buildings or walls around them, they're going to create a hole in the base where attackers can drop troops. The best strategy for giant bomb placement has been to place them in the path of where the most destructive ground troops with mid-range hit points will travel. Troops such as Bowlers, Valkyrie, and Miners have all been an important focus for giant bombs, but the Hog Riders have always been the most popular troops for giant bomb defense placements. Because Hog Riders target defenses, it's easier to know how they're going to path on your base, unlike the Bowlers and the Valks and the Miners who tend to have a mind of their own. So so the giant bomb's main defensive focus has been to take out hog riders, and the most popular tactic has been to place two giant bombs next to each other between two defensive buildings where hog riders will path. This placement has coined the phrase bacon or bacon maker as triggering two bombs at the same time by hog riders was an instant death that attackers could not heal out of no matter how high of a level their hogs were. However, with the October 2016 update, giant bomb were reverted to no longer do 1.5 damage to hog riders. This allowed attackers to be able to heal hog riders out of a double giant bomb placement. But there are multiple ways you can create bacon makers with double giant bombs. It's more difficult in this new meta as some placement requires hogs to be running in a specific direction, but it's still possible to create instant death areas for hogs. The first way you can do this is by placing two giant bombs after a bomb tower. The bomb tower bomb followed by two giant bombs will create an instant death area that hogs cannot heal out of. Using a wizard tower as the back end defense is an extra safety measure to make sure that those hogs don't survive. Double giant bombs on their own will take out a group of hogs if the attacker doesn't heal the area in time. However, it's easy to spot these two by four areas on the base and prepare for them. So now this brings me to the whole reason you came to this video, the new double giant bomb and we're going to call this the double double as it's going to take two giant bombs and two bombs to pull this off just two of the regular small bombs now what is so special about this is 
first, it's completely hidden. There's no bomb tower used in this setup to hint to the attacker where this double-double is going to be placed. Secondly, there are multiple setups for this double-double, and it can be way more inconspicuous than just the normal 2x4 space on the base. Yes, you can set this up as a 2x6 space, which is probably the most powerful one that you're going to catch the hogs at almost every single possible angle that they hit it at, but there's also setups that require a 2x2, two, then a one by one, one by one, and then a two by two. So visibly, this death zone ends up looking like just any normal setup. Maybe like there's a spring trap between it or something, but definitely not double giant bombs. So this can really throw off the attacker. And most importantly, even if the attacker knows where it is, even if they drop a heal, it doesn't matter because that's what makes a double giant bomb, or in this case, a double double, is that instant death to hog riders even in a hill. Now this space can be set up multiple ways and you can see as I'm playing video and attacks, all the different variations that you can do with this double double. The most important thing to keep in mind as you're setting these up is the two bombs, the two small bombs have to touch each other and the giant bombs go on the outside of the regular small bombs. The reason for this is the giant bombs, remember, have that two tile radius of trigger. So they are going to be triggered much easier than the smaller bombs. The smaller bombs only have a one tile trigger. So you have to make sure that the hogs are definitely gonna hit those little bombs. And that will also bring them close enough to that two tile trigger radius for the giant bombs and set those off too. So what needs to happen is all four bombs need to go off at relatively the same time. There can be like a little, like half second delay and it's gonna be able to catch them even in, in the hill zone. And you can see that as I go through these demonstrations that sometimes that second giant bomb has just a slight delay, but it doesn't matter. It still rips those hog riders apart. So check out some of these really unique placements. And I think probably the best way to describe it is either we're going to have a one tile double double or a two tile double double. And what I'm talking about here is how much visible space is left between the two defensive buildings. Do you have that two space area between the buildings like we're used to in the double giant bombs or is it just a one space? If you're using a two by two defensive building, so we're talking the air sweeper or the Tesla here, it's just gonna take one space for sure between that and the other three by three defensive building. So it's gonna look like there's no way there's gonna be a giant bomb bacon maker in that area, right? And you can also do this by using two three by three buildings. You just need to offset them, just kind of like how you would be placing spring traps. So they're not gonna be lined up directly with each other like how we're used to on the double giant bombs. So either a two by two going into a three by three that creates that one tile space, or if we have three by threes, there has to be one, they have to be off center from each other. And you can see that in these setups. Now these one tile double double setups are so awesome because the attacker is gonna have absolutely no idea where these are. So it's gonna catch them off guard. They may not even put a hill there. So you're definitely gonna catch them. The only thing with this is there are some really weird angles if I send the hogs at those angles into this one tile double double that some of the hogs may survive and I'll show you some replays of that too how you can see some of the hogs are sneaking out of that but that's something I'm used to seeing even in old school double giant bombs where the hogs have been able to kind of skirt around you know some of the hogs have been able to escape that while the majority of the hog pack bite it in the dust but to have that guarantee doesn't matter what angle the hogs are coming in at you're going to make bacon so this is going to become key in defending your bases against hog riders especially at Town Hall 7 and Town Hall 8, where hogs are just running wild and doing whatever they want. So this is the new bacon maker for Town Hall 8, Town Hall 7, and Town Hall 9 that's going to catch those attackers way off guard. Something to keep in mind as you notice me demoing these hogs attacking these double doubles is that when hogs take down the first building, they run around the outside of the ashes of that building. They don't run across the center, even though the building's no longer there. So you can see how the hog hogs go up one side or the other, and that's how they're gonna split off. And this is why it becomes important, especially with spring traps, to offset your buildings so that you can direct hogs right over the spring trap because they're not gonna go straight through the center. This is also something you need to keep in mind with when you're making these double doubles. 
and trying to determine what direction these hogs are going to be running at and so which side of the building are they going to run across once they take that first building down. Now let's move on to Town Hall 10 and Town Hall 11, typical placement for giant bombs and usually that's going to be close to the infernos to stop hogs or to force a freeze hill. On some bases for Town Hall 10 and 11 it's important to put the giant bombs into the core to stop the Valkyrie. Most of the time on Great Town Hall 10 bases you're going to see two giant bombs used in an inferno compartment and the other three placed where you'd want to force the attacker to heal or take unexpected damage. For example pairing them with a bomb tower that's out of range of an inferno can definitely force the heal or take out troops that the attacker wasn't expecting to need to use a heal on. So as you're designing your bases the main rule when it comes to ground traps for all town hall levels the springs the bombs the teslas is that you want to utilize these in separate zones on your base. You don't want to set up kill zones of giant bombs and spring traps together. You want to use spring traps to take out troops that are already at full health. The tesla farms in themselves are going to force a heal so you don't want to use your giant bombs in the same area where the attackers are already healing. So don't put your giant bombs with your tesla farms, don't put your giant bombs with your spring traps, keep all of those separate and create multiple destructive areas on your base and make sure that they're spaced out far enough that one hill cannot cover two areas. The more hill zones you create on the base the more difficult it's going to be for the attacker to three star you. Alright guys that's going to wrap up the ultimate guide to giant bombs. So if you like it be sure to like it and if you love it subscribe and if you have even more tips about how to use giant bombs be sure to leave it in the comments below because I'd love to hear them. Also want to make sure you guys know that I am running friendly wars on the weekends both now on Saturday morning and Sunday night. Saturday morning will be at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sunday night will be at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hopefully there's a time within those two days that will work for you that you can come and join in a friendly war. The wars are going to be taking place in Onyx Orcas and Black Badgers. Be sure to follow me on Twitter for more information on that and when those wars are starting. They are one hour to join, one hour prep, one hour war. Or just a lot of fun and then I'm putting the best attacks onto my second channel. I'll link to that in the description down below. That second channel is Clan War Attacks and you can go there and find the playlist from Your Friendly War and see your awesome attack and share it with others. Plus that channel has playlists of all different kinds of popular attacks that you can go and watch and get up to strategy on how to do that attack yourself. So be sure to sub to that channel if you haven't already because I'm updating it constantly with new three-star attacks. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.